This episode is brought to you by the Sterling Soap Company. Christmas will be here before you know it, and you know what would make a great stocking stuffer for everybody in your family? Sterling Soap. From bar soap to shave soap, beard balm to lip balm, aftershaves and lotions, Sterling Soap has something for everyone on your list. Check out their seasonal soaps that will complement the scents of your home this holiday season. And they're more than just soap. They also have a full line of coffee straight from the Sterling Roastery. Find their full line of products at sterlingsoapcompany.com. Face off with Firefly Publishing for another drop into the fascinating world of pro hockey history with Hockey Hall of Fame True Stories 2. Following his bestseller, hockey historian and writer Eric Zwig opens the doors to the Pro Hockey Hall of Fame, revealing a treasure of untold tales, bizarre incidents, and captivating trivia that will leave the most devoted puckhead astounded. Just to name drop a few of the players he's included in this book are Wayne Gretzky, Yaromir Yager, and Bobby Hull. Hockey Hall of Fame True Stories 2 is a must read for pro hockey fans who crave more than just scores and statistics. Mr. Zwig invites you to uncover the true stories that have shaped the sport, ensuring that you will never look at the game of hockey the same way again. So skate on over to Amazon.com, Target, and Walmart to get your copy now. This is Jeremy McFarland for the Footballers Family Podcast. And, and I think this year, in 2020, it should have taught us a lot of things that will aid us from this point on maybe it has taught us to be more patient and understanding maybe it has taught us to value the little things in life and or maybe it has taught us to look back and see how truly blessed we've really been but maybe i think one of the things if not the top thing that it should have taught us is to value the people who are in our lives more than we did before hopefully you take this moment to be thankful for your family and to let them know how you truly feel about them. Remember, we are not promised tomorrow. Make sure you're using today to show your love for your family. Now, I know this podcast is about football, but in the title I, uh, of this podcast, I said it's football is family. So you have the football aspect and you have the family aspect. And that's what today's guest is all about. Is He's very special to me. He's my father, Mark McFarland. Growing up, he used to take me to Vanderbilt football games. I don't think he ever took me to a game where Vanderbilt actually won, but he did take me to games. And he even took me between my freshman and sophomore year in college to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, even though he is not a football fan himself. When I asked him to be a guest on this podcast, he wondered what we were going to talk about because he isn't a football fan. But I hope – you enjoy this interview because I asked him questions about what it was like growing up and the Thanksgivings that were very special to him. And maybe through this interview, you'll see what makes special, what makes Thanksgiving special to you. While you're in between the three games today and your third helping of Turkey and dressing, take a moment and subscribe to this podcast and also check out the great, the other great podcast for the sports history network. And if you would like to be on the Football's Family Podcast, message me at Jeremy underscore McFarlane on Twitter or on the Football is Family Facebook page. Thank you and have a great Thanksgiving. And we'd like to welcome everybody back to Football is Family. And I've got a special guest tonight. Would you like to introduce yourself? Well, uh, I am your father, Mark McFarlane. Well, see there... When we talk about football as family, you can't get much uh, closer than that. Uh, give, I'm going to give you a little backstory about this this discussion today. Um, my dad has told me several times he's not much of a football fan, but he's done a couple of things football wise for me. He's taken me to some Vanderbilt games, and I remember one game, Daddy, where you you took Jamie and me, my sister and me, and it was raining. It was raining, so we sat through a Vanderbilt football game in the rain, but he also took me to Canton, Ohio, to the uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame, so you've, you've, uh, you've gone through the ringer when it comes to football, and I appreciate that. Uh, but today uh, today is not about football. Uh, this, this episode should land on uh, Thanksgiving, 
So the one thing I want to talk about is one of the things uh, about Thanksgiving to me that is very special uh, is the aspect of family. Uh, so I want to ask you some of your uh, favorite Thanksgiving memories. Well, <clears throat> the idea of Thanksgiving uh, is so fill, full of the idea of, of, of family. You can go all the way back. I was raised uh, for years on a, uh, a little country farm in Hickman County, Tennessee. And Hickman County is where I live now. But uh, it was a very rural farm. We didn't even have, uh, uh, we, we still had the old outhouses. Uh, so uh, it was the idea that, you know, we had the chickens, uh, uh, chicken coops and the pig styes and stuff like that. But my mother uh, always made sure we had that, you know, we had a, the, the meals and the idea of getting together in uh, that dining room, uh, which has the house has long since been uh torn down but i can remember it vividly the idea of thanksgiving is family in so many ways and part of the and that reflects the fact that we need to be thankful for our families well, especially especially this year uh considering that you know even though i heard today that the vac there is a vaccine available for covid is not going to be readily available until january february of 2021 this whole year we have been arms linked away from people and uh, it's made family even more special than before um but some of the some of the memories that i have growing up uh we'd always go uh to my aunt's house and uh, we, I don't know if we're going to be able to do that this year, but we always go to my aunt's house and we would, uh, there walking in, Uncle Roger would always have the, the Cowboys game on. And I remember one year we were at my grandmother's house and we stayed there over for, for hours and I would go back and forth to that turkey and just graze. Um, why is that such a memory that we hold on to? I, I don't know. The idea of uh, of being thankful, and of course, again, that's the thing behind Thanksgiving, obviously. But um, I can remember going to my uh, one of my grandmothers, and the big thrill of getting to stay all night with her. One of the big thrills was that I'd walk across the railroad. We'd walk across the railroad to go to the store right beside or near her house. And she would let me choose the cereal that we were going to have for <laughs> breakfast uh, the next morning. And um, that was the big thrill. Uh, you know, I got to choose the cereal uh, that, you know, that, that you got. And for parents, that would be one of the things that you need to remember. And, uh, the small things. You never know what a child is going to remember. Uh, you know, you think about the big things. And I can be, I can remember many years ago getting a pair of binoculars from my father who has long since passed. And I can remember him taking me to the edge of the old farmhouse porch. And we would, we went out that Christmas night and looked up at the stars, you know, through the binoculars which after more than 50 years, I still have. It's, it's memories like that. When you think of all the things that you have, um, they, they go away, but the memories don't. Uh, one of the, one of the things to be thankful for is pictures. And one, um, uh, I literally have thousands, you know, probably thousands, a few thousand pictures, um, or, and always write on the back who those pictures are because 
a year from now, two years from now, or your grandchildren from now, they will need to know. Be thankful for those pictures. And the uh, pictures of the day, of course, you know, are on disc. So I don't know how they'll be handed down to generations <laughs> to come. If you, um, if you can tell our listeners uh, one thing that you would want them to be thankful for, just one thing that this coming Thursday, whenever Thanksgiving is, I don't have the date in front of me, but the date that this is released, what is the one thing that you feel that they should be thankful for this, this year? For this year, that, that God has blessed us in so many, many ways. First and foremost, he blessed us with his son. He has, uh, God has blessed us with the, the strength and to withstand this horrible time. We have heard about these types of times in times past. Uh, in 1918 or 19, uh, when you had a horrible uh, infection going around. And here, our children, our grandchildren, will remember this for many years to come. But the fact that here we are talking about it in, in November shows that we need to be thankful for it that we have been able to survive now now uh one thing that i've gotten from you is my love for history and if i remember correctly that it was during the civil war that the idea of thanksgiving was really introduced um they went through a hard you know this country went through four or five years of of just brutal hatred and to take one day to be thankful for something is, is amazing. So I've, I've come up in my head the four F's of Thanksgiving. Faith, family, food, and football. <laughs> now, these are things that I have, uh, I have lived by for several years. But I want to say that there's one special memory that, I, that I've gotten from this man right here that he doesn't know, but I'm going to let him know is that each year, now this year is going to be different because I'm going to put up Christmas pretty soon because it's just 2020 and we're going to have something happy. But each year we would watch the Macy's Day Thanksgiving Parade, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. And we would have to watch until Santa comes down, <laughs> down the middle. And that to me starts my, my Christmas season. Um, and I get, I got that from you starting some, uh, you know, some ha uh, habits long ago when I was growing up there, there in Dixon. Uh, but I'm thankful. I'm thankful for the fact that you've been a great example to me. So thank you for, for that. Well, uh, well, I'm, I'm thankful that, to, that I've been blessed with that opportunity. Uh, there's, uh, you know, Thanksgiving, um, uh, Thanksgiving kind of gets chucked under the, you know, or put to the side a little bit because Christmas, you know, now, you know, it's Christmas seems to come earlier and earlier. You go into the stores now and uh, be, you already see, of course, Christmas. Uh, yeah, I already heard music up. today and oh, it's oh, uh, yeah. November the 9th. And, uh, but the idea of, of Thanksgiving, um, it, it's the idea, of, of course, the families getting together. Uh, we've already planned. Uh, uh, your your uh, cousin is going to have uh, Thanksgiving up at her house, you know, up in Nashville. So, uh, and and the Thanksgiving, you know, the uh, the times that you that you have, uh, and and tra the traditions there there's nothing wrong with traditions As a matter of fact there you know that's what makes a lot of uh, things just wonderful you look forward to it and uh of course uh, the idea used to be the day after uh, day after thanksgiving christmas was on its way but now of course christmas seems to be a little earlier getting each each year well it's it's like the song says we need a little christmas but let's go through thanksgiving first and the thing that uh i could tell you that you know we we had a small family at one point and now it's not so small <laughs> uh but uh 
Lord willing, we will have a good Thanksgiving and I hope everybody else does too. Now football is involved. The Cowboys play, the, the Lions play uh, every year. And I hope y'all enjoy that. But first and foremost, be, uh, be around your family if you can and make sure that they know that you're grateful for them. And I want to thank you, Daddy, for spending some time with us tonight. Well, uh, you're welcome. Thank you for letting me have the opportunity. And uh, uh, the idea of the, the footballs, uh, you know, not only the professional, but, of course, the, 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 the high school teams are so special, too. They are. You know, they're, they're, you know, they just, you know, they're just a kind of, you know, a, a place that people just love to go and, and of course, they love to watch their, their children, but it's a time for community to get together as well. And that's what makes high school um, uh, special as well. And I understand that Alabama has a football team, too. Isn't that right? Yeah, they're, okay. They're, they're okay. They're okay? Yeah, right. they, they were good at one point when Forrest Gump played for them, but I'm not sure about now. Well, you know, it, it's always been, uh, you know, uh, here in Tennessee, the – the rivalry between the different teams and in college and, uh, and so forth. So, uh, it, it's wonderful entertainment, uh, as long as it just stays entertainment and, uh, people just enjoy it. That's right. Well, again, thank you. And y'all thank you for listening. And this is yet another reason why family is important, but football is family. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude, and I hope that you enjoyed this recent episode presented by the Sports History Network and were able to learn some good old-fashioned sports history knowledge nuggets. I started the Sports History Network Back in 2020, with the mission to help podcasters find a community of like-minded sports history nerds, as well as helping aspiring podcasters to start their own shows. We have a little bit over 30 shows on the network right now covering all sorts of sports history. But as far as I'm concerned, we're just at the toothpick in the ocean moment. You know that. Can't even figure it out because there's so much more coming. We wanted to create the ultimate headquarters for sports yesteryear starting with Podcast Network and our website, but we're going to continue to move into other mediums as well. And here's the cool part, because we want you to be part of our team. So if you're interested in starting your own podcast, or maybe being a guest on one of our shows, or who knows, maybe even writing an article for us over on the website. Seriously, all you got to do is reach out to us on the contact page over at sportshistorynetwork.com. You can be as technologically savvy as a Neanderthal tapping on a stone trying to figure out this whole hieroglyphics thing back in the day. Again, it doesn't matter, because even if you don't understand the whole podcast space, we have a production team that can pretty much help you out with doing everything. All you got to do, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com, head to the contact page, fill it out. That message goes right to me, and I'll reach out to you as soon as I can. But for now, dude, I'm through if you're through.